Looking cute and keeping warm this fall and winter, come with me on the search for my perfect fall and winter coat, a few things I'm thinking about getting from the Sephora sale, and what I've learned about my style from my latest trip to Milan. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Shakura and I believe that when you feel good, you look good. So on this channel, I show you how to take fashion and use it as a tool to help you look and feel your best. So if you have been following me for a while, you know that we often consult our debt when we are trying to recreate an outfit. If you're new here, all debt is is an acronym that stands for details in an outfit, essential pieces you need for an outfit, and tweaking the outfit for personal style. When I used to study in high school and college, I would often make acronyms to help me remember and retain information. So this is why I do things like debt, just to help us through and navigate this fashion space. So we use debt to recreate outfits, but this winter to stay cute and warm, we are going to leap. So leap simply is layering, experimenting with color and patterns, accessorizing, and protecting your comfort, your warmth, and your body. We are going to talk about each one of these categories in separate videos, but this section of this video, we are going to focus on layering. So this, for example, is a very easy way to start layering in the fall when it's not too cold and you still can get away with not wearing a coat. She could have simply worn the shirt underneath with these leather shorts. It would have still been a very cute outfit and it would convey what she was trying to convey, right? But by layering this sleeveless blazer or vest, or whatever you refer to it as, it not only adds warmth, but it adds depth. We often talk about adding depth through an outfit and giving it more dimension. And she did so by not only layering the shirt with the vest, but also layering a belt, which can also fall in the accessory category, but we'll talk about that in another video, right? This is something that could be worn at the beginning of fall and also at the end. When it starts to get a little bit cooler, she can layer this even more with a blazer or even a nice wool coat or even a fur or faux fur coat, right? It's cute, it's warm, it's comfortable. For those days when it's 70 in the morning and then it gets cooler at night, she could simply take off this vest in the morning and throw it on if she's going for drinks at night. I think this is a perfect example of how to layer, particularly for the beginning of fall. So I really feel like these leather shorts are not only a standout piece, but are classic. They could be worn for years and years to come as long as you get a decent pair. And they really come in all lengths and all prices. So a decent pair is relative, however you wanna spend, however much you wanna spend. But these from Coach, these from Revolve, these from the Frankie shop and these from Nordstrom all give a very similar vibe and you could really play with the proportions and the color um, depending upon what you like, your height, your shape, all those different you know nuances. But there is a pair of leather shorts out there for everyone. You can also really play with the dimensions and the shape of the vest. You might prefer a vest that's shaped more like this from Helmut Lang. This one is via the Outnet. This one from Anina Bing gives a very similar vibe to the original outfit. And this one, not really a vest, it's more of a vest and bustier um, hybrid. <laughs> it can really come in clutch if you are considering the T in debt, right? If you are trying to tweak the outfit a little bit, I feel like this can really come in clutch for somebody who likes the look but wants to change it up just a bit. And as far as belts go, you can try any place from Bottega to Amazon to Etsy. Look at this extremely cool belt from Etsy. Heaven Mayhem, the place where I got these really cool earrings, right? also has some really cool belts. I'll link them in the description box to take a look at them. They're not as big and clunky as this belt, but they have some really cool belts. And as far as the shirt, you could just use a bodysuit. I were to recreate this right now in my closet, I would probably just use my brown bodysuit, right? There's no need to go out to buy something if you have something that's similar. However, if you're looking for something that has more of a pattern, this one from Essence, this one from Cause and this one from Neiman Marcus will do the trick. 
And as far as the black ankle boots go, girl, you know you have a pair of black ankle boots in your closet, okay? <laughs> you know you do. I know I do. I'm honestly looking for a new pair, but that's besides the point. You know you have a pair of black ankle boots in your closet. And if you don't, this can be tweaked, right? So you can use um, a higher boot. You can use a heel, something that's already in your closet. But obviously, I'm here to give you choices. Stowed, Everlane, and Sam Edelman all have great, great options. This outfit is probably the simplest way to start to layer. If you haven't done this before, you've you've seen everyone do it, right? It's taking a white button down, which you know you have, <laughs> a sweater that you already have in your closet and pairing it with a statement pair of pants is probably the easiest way and one of the really chicest, cutest ways that you can layer without spending extra money. Because even if you don't have a plaid pair of pants, you have a pair of jeans, you have a skirt, right? You have a white button down. And you know, if you live in a cold climate, you already have a sweater. It doesn't have to look exactly like this, but this formula is universal and can be used in so many ways. If you are looking for these plaid fun pants, Old Navy, Spanx, and The Gap all have something very similar and they all carry extended sizes. Grab a hat from Gigi Pip or lack of color and you're on your way. This kind of androgynous um, layered fall slash winter look I know is right up somebody's alley. The colors are beautiful. The layering is immaculate. Um, she looks so smooth that like you can't even tell there's two shirts underneath here. And though we're not talking about coloring in this particular video, the blue and the orange being complementary colors but in different shades is beautiful. This is definitely a well thought out outfit or maybe she just got it, you know? But I'm not only speaking about the layering between the sweater vest and the collar shirt. Because the pants are ankle length, they're not full length, by pulling the socks up and having the pants kind of go over top that, that gives it another dimension and another layer. Had these pants been longer and fallen over the shoes, the look would have been slightly different. That is another element of layering layering um, that really makes this outfit interesting. I keep zooming in to see if she has on a tie and I cannot tell, but it wouldn't surprise me if she did. And if she did, that's just another element of layering and adding interest. So the Outnet, Target, Everlane, all have pants with a similar color. Some of them are short, some of them are long. So you kind of have to use your debt in that respect. This sweater vest from Essence has similar colors, but you really might have to play with the sizes because this is a man's vest um, as opposed to a woman's vest, which is pretty much the same. It's just um, cut for different sizes. So you kind of have to play with that. And then if you don't like the colors, you can get this one from J. Crew. You could go to Nordstrom, you could go to Zara. It doesn't necessarily have to be these colors. In fact, you really want to choose colors that work well with your skin tone and your undertones and all that good stuff. And as far as the chunky loafer is concerned they are very much everywhere um these from frank serrato these from sam edelman and these from everlane would all work very well with this outfit so with this outfit there's a few elements that i want to kind of touch on even though we're not talking about color in this video, the monochrome, the all one color is a hit because it still gives um, fashion and it still gives interest even with this one fairly boring quote unquote color. Her use of different fabrics and different tones also adds interest. And then at first I thought that this was an hourglass blazer, but this blazer looks like it has a drawstring, which is totally different, but also gives a very similar vibe to the hourglass blazers that are very much on trend right now. First of all, she is warm, okay? The long skirt, the layering from the collar shirt, the blazer, 
and then the coat. Something about this looks pretty well thought out, but also very laid back and so fashion. Though this outfit may not be your style, in fact, none of these outfits may be your style, but I feel like it's important to look at certain outfits with um, a critiquing eye, and not to say that it's good or bad, but to be able to pull lessons from them. And the lesson that I'm giving or getting from this outfit is that monochrome does not have to be boring, and if you're going to layer it, to use different textures, different shades, and accessorize. If you notice, her collar shirt is buttoned all the way to the top and she has layered necklaces. So her necklaces are layered, her clothing is layered. She just knocked this out the park, in my opinion. So if there's something about this that you want to recreate but you don't have, I did find a few things. Again, if you already have an hourglass blazer, you can kind of do this um, and get a similar look. This one from the Frankie shop I told you guys about in the last video that is back in stock. But I also found this from Michael Michael Kors, which is a drawstring blazer. So if you kind of want to go tit for tat and really try to mimic that, that's a great option. I'm in no way telling you that you should mimic it tit for tat. I strongly want to encourage the tweaking for your personal style, that T in debt. But if your personal style really loves this blazer, that's there for you. And Everlane, Banana Republic, and Naked Fashion all have long skirts that have similar color that you can use to get the same vibe. And as far as the coat, we're gonna talk about the tee and tweaking for a little bit. Look at this coat from Naked. Now, while it is not as long as the coat that she is wearing, this can add some different texture and shapes to your outfit, depending on, again, how tall you are, what you feel comfortable with, the way your body is shaped, all that good stuff. This could be a kind of cool option. Even imagine switching out the skirt for a pair of wide leg pants and maybe using this. You could use the same type of concept, but with pants and a shorter jacket. This stand studio is on the outnet for a very good price. will give you a very similar look. H&M also have good options for this coat. Then the last thing we're gonna talk about in this segment for our leafing today is very simple. And I'm gonna show you a few things, but again, I'm sure you have a lot of this in your closet already. It is the hoodie blazer combination. This for me is perfect for the weekend morning when you're running out to get your Starbucks or your local coffee shop or you have to, you know, run to Target or whatever. I feel like this is perfect. Now, this can look sloppy right? Depending on what you're wearing it with. If you are throwing a hoodie on with some ratty, tatty leggings that girl you know you were supposed to throw away, <laughs> no. Or if you're wearing your hoodie that you've had for a very long time that needs to be like thrown away, what we are looking for is nice, clean, crisp, lines. I would even try it with a pair of trousers, right? So a pair of trousers with a hoodie and a blazer, off to run to Starbucks, off to run to Walmart or Target early in the weekend before the crowds come, but you still look put together and comfortable. This is such an easy way to layer and it can be elevated or it can be dressed down. Obviously you can wear it with your leggings and that does look fine, but I would encourage you to try different bottoms trousers, skirts, something else. So of course, places like Anina Bing have hoodies. This one from Abercrombie is cute. This blazer from the Frankie shop, this blazer from Everlane, and this blazer for H&M would be a great throw on and go type of option. I know it kind of seems counterproductive to pair um, a dressy pair of pants with a more laid back top, for example, the hoodie, but it does add a bit of juxtaposition to the outfit and that's always what we're looking for to add interest. So we got the L and leap down, we got the layering. Next time we would talk about the E, which is experimented with color and pattern. So if you watched this video, you know that I made a huge mistake. <laughs> I did not buy that coat from Cause. Well, I am going right now to see if I can find it.
So we can all agree oh, that I made the biggest mistake of my life when I left that Costco there. I came out, sure I should be working, mind your business, but I came back downtown to see if they have my size. I feel like I made the biggest mistake of my life. It's not online, every size is sold out. So hopefully I can find it. Like this is what I get for trying to save money and be responsible. If you think about it, I spend more money because I have to get on the subway twice. <laughs> A lot of drama just for a cold. <laughs> oh my gosh, why is my heart beating? It's not that deep. If it's not there, there are plenty of other coats I can get. A main dramatic, right? This is actually a size down to what I thought I was gonna need. They had the bigger size, but I feel like this size works better. And I can button it, but it is a bit tight, but I can 100% button it. And by the way I'm going, I will be able to button it, no problem. Yay, I'm so happy. I did it. I am so excited. <laughs> um, but we're gonna go into anthropology. I'm not spending nothing else. Between what I bought in, in Europe and this coat, my little money is up for the month, okay? <laughs> my, my allowance is up for the month. But we are gonna go into um, anthropology and see what we can see. Take a dupe is really good. This is my first time seeing it in person and it is amazing. It's a really good dupe. I walked out, I didn't buy anything. I think I spent enough on this coat. <laughs> I'm about to go home and do some work. But being in there really got me excited for Christmas. For those of you that celebrate, are you excited? And when do you put your tree up? Anyway, let me get on this train, child. Y'all know how I feel about this subway. To be on this train and actually go do some work. Thank you for coming with me on my little adventure. So for a sale comes often and every time it comes my cart is full and then it's not and then it's full and I decided that this time I'm only gonna get the things that I'm out of and maybe one or two fun things to experiment with. I am a creature of habit and I go to the same things over and over again. I am not a huge experimenter with my makeup. I do a lot with my skin um, but my makeup is always pretty much the same, right? I did get a new foundation and we'll talk about that later, but I like glowy, I like neutral, I like what they call the latte girl makeup, and I always have, ever since I've been wearing it. So I'm not getting a ton of makeup, but this is what I'm getting. My skin was suffering when we were in Europe. I had some texture issues, I had clogged pores and I really think it's because I switched from using this in an effort to try something different. This is like my holy grail. I have gone back to it and already I can see improvements in my skin. This is not cheap so I usually do wait until the sale comes and I, in my opinion I think it's worth every penny. I've also gotten my husband to use it and when he does use it <laughs> you can definitely see how different his skin looks. I will always use this especially if I know I'm going on a trip. There are two type of people in the world. Those of us who do like blush and those of us who stay away from it. 
I find that when I find a blush that works well with my skin tone, it really helps enhance my overall look. I don't like to overdo it, so I really do like a blush that really goes well. So it's usually like a terracotta that matches me or something uh, with a more berry tone. I don't use the berry tone often because you can definitely tell, but with the terracotta, it just kind of enhances my look. This is a new product or a set of products that I have not heard of before. We the People is a by this lady who is Brooklyn born, a native New Yorker, and that just made me even more excited. If you're not new here, you know that I like to support woman-owned businesses. I like to support small businesses. I love to support black-owned and people of color. So I have two mascaras that are my holy grail. This Gucci one and another one from IT Cosmetics. So I'm out of this, so I'm definitely gonna get this again. But if you are a person that also likes the Gucci Flora, I feel like this is a good little set to get because the mascara and the perfume and it's $53 as opposed to $38, I think it's a great deal. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that Briogeo is my go-to hair products. I've said it before, my hair made a turnaround. I've always had fairly thick hair, I'll be honest there, and long hair. However, it was not thriving like it was supposed to until I switched to better quality products. When I first tried these, I did not get the hype. I was just like, okay, it's a lip gloss, whatever. <laughs> but the more I tried it, the more I started to love it. It is ridiculously expensive for a lip gloss. I'm not gonna lie to you. So it's a good time to get it during the Sephora sale. I am out of my red color, so I'm definitely going to get one in the sale. I do have a clear, a brown, and a red, and I feel that's really all you need to cover your bases. And like I said, I buy them usually during the sale because they are not cheap. They aren't cheap, let's be honest. So before I went to Europe, I bought two new fragrances and looking at my shelf right now, it's absolutely insane. And though I want this fragrance and it's a good time to buy, I might hold off. Until I'm able to sell the fragrances that I don't use, I'm trying not to buy anything else. If I get it, obviously I'll show you, and I will obviously show you the other recent fragrances that I got, but it's just too much. I have one body, I have, you know, <laughs> I just don't need that many. So, especially because I don't love and use all of them. So I'm trying to work that out, and I'll let you guys know. I am a huge Olaplex girl, and I've been using it since um, the pandemic, the beginning of the pandemic, but I also heard great things about K18, and I've actually heard it's not the same exact thing, um, but you're supposed to use it during the same time. I'm not sure. I'm going to do some more research, but I do want to try this. If you've had any experience with this, please let me know. So these are just my basics that I'm always going to be getting. I've told you guys about this body moisture treatment. I use that every single day. I'm out, so it's a good time that I need to get some more. This is my Holy Grail um, mascara that I use in, in conjunction with the Gucci mascara. Um, this actually works better when it's a little dry and a little old. These cotton pads are fantastic. They're $4.50, child. They're big, they're thick, I love them. I actually have the, and have spoken about, the shower um, body scrub by this brand and this particular fragrance. And so I decided that maybe I should try the body cream or the deodorant or the spray. I'm not sure yet, but I did put these two on here because I'm interested in maybe trying them. Let me know if you have any experience with them. I do have the Bum Bum Cream in the original um, smell and I love it. I just, I don't know, maybe sometimes formulas change. Let me know your thoughts. Anyway, that's what's in my basket when I'm thinking about getting. Let me know if you are shopping the sale and what you are getting. So if you watch this video, you know that I talked about the style and the essence of the men and the women in Milan. And it really got me thinking about my style, where I wanted to go, and how I will be approaching style from now on. So there 
is a lot of talk about what your three words are to describe your style. And I've spoken about this before, and I really want to kind of hone in on my three words and sticking to what my style is. Three words that I chose based on things that I love and how I want to be perceived to the world is glam, classic, and sensual. And I've said this before, um, and I just kind of want to show you what I mean. So when I look at my Instagram, I realize that most of those pictures just really are not me. They just aren't. Most of the videos and a lot of the outfits that I put out, not all of them, but most of them, do not scream me. And when I looked at those pictures, I really had to think about why I wasn't conveying my style in these photos. And perhaps that's why I wasn't consistent. But when I go back and think about it, there's three things that kind of come to mind that make me think and realize why I wasn't conveying to the world what I want to convey. Number one thing, and, and I know a lot of people can relate to this, and I don't want to harp on this too much, but I, I do want to speak about it very quickly, is my weight gain and my weight loss. I have lost and gained weight more than I am willing to tell you, honestly. This time, I've, I have really done it differently. I'm hoping this time is the last time. I've been really, really taking my time. Seven to eight months, it's been a while, right? So weight gain, when it does happen to me, does take a toll on my mental health and then that takes a toll on my style and how I want to be presented to the world so I'm not going to talk about it a lot just because I don't want to trigger anybody but I do need to say that that is a big reason why I shy away from what I really love the other thing and this might be hard to explain is being a fashion girl okay <laughs> when you think of a fashion girl I don't think I fit that stereotype even though I know all the information and I studied it formally and I study and I study it daily really um, and I know styling and I know history of certain houses and I know all that so I find it extremely interesting I am not stereotypically what you think of as a fashion girl and I will show you uh, what I mean well those trendy pieces even though I do like some trends don't don't get me wrong but those trendy pieces um, that the fashion girls were wearing don't necessarily um, fit into my style. Now, do I appreciate those fashion pieces? Absolutely. It's, you know, I really do. I love it. I love looking at it. Um, some of them I would even wear, but a lot of the things, I know I just it just wouldn't fit with me. I know that. So when I did look to try to emulate that, it just wasn't being conveyed properly because that's just not me. So what does make me feel good? What does make me happy? I was looking at some of my old pictures as a child, like a teenager, and I was wearing bootcut jeans. I had little heels, a lot of dresses. Those all make me feel, to this day in my big age, comfortable. That's what my style is. A long time ago, I made a correlation between your favorite music and how you dressed. I made the correlation between jazz and what I want to project to the world, right? So when I do think of jazz, I think that it can be glamorous. I feel like it's classic and I feel like it can be sensual. So when I think of jazz and when I think of and how I feel like I want to present myself to the world, this is how I see it. So this doesn't have much color, which is not exactly me. I still do love color, but for some reason, this all kind of came together with these really warm colors, right? So if you notice on this board, there's a lot of fur, whether it's faux or real. I think that's very glamorous, right? Um, there's a red lipstick, again, glamorous. The top handle bag. I randomly have Robin Gibbons at the bottom because I really dig that 90s simple glamour. And that's what she kind of represented to me. Also, I have some things that really just kind of stick with my personality. I love to sit down with this particular candle because that's my one of my favorite spell, smells from Dictique um, with some tea or some coffee. And yeah, this is how I want to be presented to the world. And in fact, used to dress like this, full fur, 
rich colors, um, simplicity, but also very glamorous, right? And this one is very similar, but there's more color in there because I really was missing the color in the first slide here. These beautiful jewel tones, this kind of old school glamour, right? I really wanted when we went to Europe to get this LV makeup holder, the Nice, but of course they didn't have it. I, of course I found something else, let's be clear. I'll show you later. <laughs> I found something else, but I really wanted that Nice. I love the old school car that really kind of makes me feel about jazz too. This faux fur with the nails um, hitting the elevator button. I have my nails like that right now. This book is something that I cannot wait to read. That's my next on my list. It's like more of a vibe than it is a style, but I hope you get the vibe that I'm talking about here. This leather trench is from Coach and it is absolutely sick. But I'm hoping that I'm conveying um, what I'm trying to say as far as style and you know how I want my vibe to be and how I will be moving forward. Now, does that mean I don't appreciate all other style? No, I love it all. I absolutely love it all, but I have to go with what makes me feel happy. So this is just the glam portion of my three words. I feel like in the next few videos, I want to break it down more. I want to talk about the sensual. I want to talk about the classic and maybe even get more into the nitty gritty of this glam part because this is very surface level. I would love to know how you would describe your style. What are your three words? You words like trendy, which I love. And I also want to make some room in my style for trends. I'm not quite sure how to do that yet. Is it trendy? Is it classic? Is it playful? Let me know what your three words are. And if you don't know right now, think about it. Give me one, give me two, and maybe the next video we can have more of a conversation. I feel like once you get down to your three words, you could really kind of hone in in what your style is. Anyway, you guys, this was a lot. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. We're gonna really get into this. I really just wanna buy what I love and have a closet full of things that make me happy. Well, yeah, let me know what your three words are. Let me know how you will be layering this fall and winter. At the moment of filming, I don't know if I got that coat or not. As soon as I'm done, I'm running out the door. So let me know what you think about that situation. <laughs> Give me your thoughts on the Sephora sale and if you're buying anything. And what are your thoughts of your own style, right? Has it evolved? Are you pretty much the same? And for the new year, do you have any style expectations or new year's resolution as it relates to your own style? Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, like, comment, subscribe, share the video, and I'll see you in my next video.